we feel like we wake up every morning in an art piece. That's a very different experience from what you get in many homes. My name is Bradley and you're here in our home which is near the Marquez Park in Porto. My name is Reginald Sill, but people here in Portugal know me as Prince. We started looking. We had a real estate agent who was great. The estate agent said, hey, there's a place that's coming on market. It's a little bit of a project and a little bit strange, but we think you might be interested in it. Would you like to take a look? We came in and went, this has potential. And we saw Fala's project, Rua Paris. So it turned out that Fala had done a project plan for the people that we had bought the property from. My name is uh, Lara and I am one of the partners at Fala Atelier. My name is Philip and I'm also a partner at Fala. The first time we visited this space, there were no walls, so it was completely empty. There was a window at the front, and there was a window at the back. We cannot create barriers that will block the light. We need to find a spatial system and a material palette that will not remove what we have already. We need to look at the qualities of the space and adapt and adjust our ambitions and desires to the eccentricities that the space has. Philip showed us what they call the wireframes. All the program is organized with just two curved lines that are made out of glass brick. The curving glass wall really kind of shaped the space. With two glass brick lines, you can organize the social areas, the private areas, the top level, the bottom level. I love the back facade. I just like that it is interesting and challenging. Yeah, it's a back facade that becomes a main facade. It's a kind of main facade for private use. Usually when we talk to a client, a client would kind of say, okay, now let's, you know, let's make the project less crazy. But in their case, it was the opposite. Having seen some of the other properties and had an idea of what Fala was capable of, it was the opportunity for us to do something that was kind of the antithesis of the nicely designed box that resembled all of the 93 other boxes right next to it. We had decided in about 2016 that we wanted to move outside the United States. As a Afro-Latino person growing up in the States and not feeling safe, it's just nice to be in a place where I don't have to worry about police stopping me because of my skin color. I remember at one point we were having a conversation with the attorney about the visa process. I asked, would us being a same-sex married couple be an issue in terms of the visa? And he was like, why would that be an issue? That's kind of been the tone of things all the way through. Even though we're in a very urban neighborhood, the garden feels very protected and very sort of kind of a place that is ours. As an artist, it's really nice to be around colors and shape and, and something funky. There's always something unique to find around this house, like always this cute little Easter egg. There are things like what we call the Mario clouds that are then echoed in the mirror in the master bathroom. So how there's like a cute random window inside the house that's like right next to the bedroom. These little silhouettes of things you can see behind the transparent glass. It's like a feast for the eyes. Because of this kind of uh, distortion that the glass brick provokes, you end up participating in a kind of choreography where what happens on the other side and the way how you move, the light you turn on and the light you turn off, the way how the sun comes in and the reflections, all of that activate the space to become more than just a house and more of a performance of sorts. Maybe not every home has 3,000 glass bricks, but the extent to which architecture can be art. And if we were part of the process by which a little more art has come into the world, that's a fun thing to have done.